Well, joining us now for our Kenya market discussion is Francis Mwangi, who is Head of Research at Standard Investment Bank, talking to us from uh, Nairobi. Morning to you, Francis. Perhaps before we get into a couple of the interesting issues uh, of the company's uh, company news, uh, let's look at how the market did in summary last week. Yes, uh, morning, David. Yeah, market uh, ended again another strong third week. Uh, index was up 0.5%. Uh, and we saw the major movers actually continuing to gain. So your large cap counters were still gaining for the third consecutive week. Uh, we saw foreign investors uh, starting to sell out of the market. Net inflows uh, hit a 19-week low. And uh, Friday specifically, we saw net outflows of around $1.3 million. So market is gaining. Uh, local investors are the ones on the demand side. And foreign investors have, starting, have started to exit considering that the index now is at a two and a half year high. Francis, looking at some of the company news or the sectoral news first, uh, the banks and apparently a report from Uganda saying that uh, in the East African uh, economic community, Kenyan banks have been the most successful in paying returns to shareholders. Uh, yes, that's true. Uh, if I look at uh, the East African banking scene, uh, yeah, Kenyan banks have led in terms of dividend payout. Uh, more importantly, because if you look at the growth of the sector in the last decade, uh, Kenyan banks have still retained an adequate capital buffer compared to a number of the banks within the region. And more importantly, because some of the countries like Rwanda, uh, the core capital requirement is higher than in the Kenyan market. So Kenyan banks have grown faster, and they've been having historically high capital levels and uh, that has led to them being able to pay out more in terms of dividends to shareholders. And then looking at electricity, it's a growing economy and expected to grow further with uh, commodities discoveries and that kind of growth. So planned by government to add 5,000 megawatts of electricity. Uh, KenGen now has to look at a rights issue to finance this. Uh, yes, I think on the energy front, uh, I think it's a common story across majority of the African countries uh, that we've seen a decade of aggressive investment in other sectors of the economy, but energy, which is capital intensive and uh, across many countries still controlled by government, uh, has lagged majority of other sectors and the economy at large. So as in Kenya today, yes, we are talking about adding another 5,000 megawatts and multiple initiatives are being sought after and Kenjan being the major generator of electricity is looking at uh, either doing a rights issue or bringing on board uh, private investors to take up the 70% stake owned by government. What sort of appetite do you think there will be for this uh, rights issue Francis? Well if, if I look at returns, short 10-year uh, returns from the energy sector, we're talking about the sector really not performing well compared to other sectors in the, in the economy. So for instance, if I'm talking about return on investment, return on investment has been less than half of what are, you would generate investing in other sectors. But I think the key thing here would be looking at the long-term opportunity in terms of we're seeing discovery of oil and we are seeing other larger operations coming to set up across East Africa. So if energy companies can get a consistent large consumer demanding for power, then the returns that investors will be looking at would be much better and therefore the appetite for the offer should, should be adequate. What kind of, uh, it's an interesting sector and uh, what kind of uh, uh, security do people have, if you like, of the returns in terms of uh, customers paying for this electricity? I suppose there are two issues. The one is will it be finished on time? So in other words, are you going to start getting your money back when they say you will start uh, getting your returns? And secondly, is there a guarantee of a certain minimum revenue level? One thinks in South Africa of uh, people simply not paying for the, their electricity. Well, uh, for, for the generating aspect, uh, specifically looking at Kenjin and other independent power producers, uh, by the time they set up capacity, or even before they set up capacity, they enter into a power purchase agreement with uh, the distributor, uh, Kenya Power Company. So at least at that level, they're guaranteed that they will generate a certain return on investment. Uh, beyond there, when talking about the distribution and uh, the consumer, in terms of payments, yes, it's been a challenge. And uh, five years ago, the initiative that was brought on board was to come up with prepaid meters. 
I think that is still ongoing because I've not been able to roll out the same number that they were looking at. So overall, for the generating side of things, I think they're protected when it comes to revenue generation because of the pre-signed power purchase agreement. On the distributor level, yes, there's still a challenge in collection. Yep. Well, I think that's probably endemic to the continent uh, as a whole. And then uh, the retail sector, a new shopping mall on the outskirts of Nairobi is planned. Uh, yes. Uh, so again, this common story across uh, Africa and East Africa is that uh, we have an expanding middle income that is having more disposable income. So appetite by investors to put up shopping malls will only continue. I think we've seen three shopping malls set up in the last two years, and we have around another three or four in the pipeline. So is it going to continue? Yes. And then also looking at different numbers coming out in terms of yields on different real estate investments. Uh, figures posted show actually the retail segment offers higher yields than your household and commercial segments.